So, what do we have here? This particular expression which is 1 upon 1 plus a raised to m minus n plus a raised to m minus p plus 1 upon 1 plus a raised to n minus m plus a raised to n minus p plus 1 upon 1 plus a raised to p minus m plus a raised to p minus n. So if you look at it, there is something too many terms over here and we have a raised to m minus n, n minus m, m minus p. <coughs> In this case, taking the LCM and simplifying could complicate the whole thing. So our q, our focus is going to be on this 1 in the denominator. We can write this 1, since m is repeated here, 1 can be written as a raised to 0. Now this a raised to 0 in this case can be written as a raised to m minus m because there is an m. Now in the further steps we will understand why, because we are going to take out a raised to m as a common factor. Plus, here since n is repeated, this 1 is written as a raised to n minus n plus a raised to n minus m plus a raised to n minus p. And what do we do here? What do we write this one as? a raised to, yes, p minus p plus a raised to p minus m plus a raised to p minus m. Now if you see the basic laws of indices, it is a raised to m minus m this can be written as a raised to m into a raised to minus m. Similarly, this can be written as a raised to, we are using the rule that x raised to a plus b is x raised to a into x raised to b into a raised to minus m. This can be written similarly as a raised to m into a raised to minus b. Plus, this can be again written as a raised to n into a raised to minus n plus a raised to n into a raised to minus m plus a raised to n into a raised to minus p. Yes, quite a mechanical job, but we need to do it. p into a raised to minus p plus a raised to p into a raised to minus m plus a raised to p into a raised to minus m. Oh, that's a huge one. But let's see. Now here what do we have? In this we can take out a raised to m as a common factor into a raised to minus m plus a raised to minus n plus a raised to minus p. So this was the reason why we wrote it as m minus m. Much the same way here we can take a raised to n as a common factor and you get a raised to minus m plus a raised to minus n plus a raised to minus p. And what do we do in the last one? Yes, we take a raised to p as a common factor and you get a raised to minus p plus a raised to minus m plus a raised to minus m. Okay, so we have a raised to m, a raised to minus m, a raised to minus m. Oh, here we just interchange. It's not a very big mistake. This a raised to minus n is this one and this a raised to minus m is this one. So this should have been a raised to minus n and a raised to minus m, but we know as per rule a plus b or b plus a it's the same so it doesn't change the value but ultimately this a raised to minus m is the one that has come from here this a raised to minus m is this so it's a raised to minus m plus minus m plus minus b now here again what can we do over here this one upon this thing a raised to minus m plus a raised to minus m plus a raised to minus p can be taken out as a common factor We can take this as a common factor and what do we have inside? You have 1 upon a raised to m plus 1 upon a raised to n plus 1 upon a raised to p. So we have a raised to minus m plus a raised to minus n plus a raised to minus p. Now this again can be written as 1 upon a raised to minus m plus a raised to minus n plus a raised to minus p into 1 upon a raised to m is nothing but a raised to minus m. 1 upon a raised to m is nothing but a raised to minus m plus a raised to minus p. So we have some term, these two get cancelled. 
and we get the solution as 1. Such a complicated one and ultimately it turns out to be 1. So the Q is how to convert the 1 to A raised to M minus N. We will be coming across a similar situation in the later problems. So we write this 1 accordingly because N is being repeated over here and taking out common factors and applying the rule. So it's a common base sum of the indices. So we break it up as A raised to M into minus N and taking out the common factor. So ultimately the answer is 1 and which is what we have over here. Let's check. Let's check what we have over here. Yes, and the answer is 1 over here. Right? So that is quite a tricky one. We need to be a little extra vigilant over there. But that is a hint how to work on the 1. Let's see what we have in store next. Okay. Here, this is a comparatively easy one compared to what we did earlier. So we have x raised to a by b. Remember that somewhere we did about a cube minus b cube. This is similar to that. So here, this one can be now written as x raised to a minus b because it is a raised to m upon a raised to n, the whole raised to a plus b into x raised to b minus c, the whole raised to b plus c into x raised to c minus a, the whole raised to c plus a. So this gives you, you're using the power of power rule, so it's x raised to a minus b into a plus b into x raised to b minus c into b plus c into x raised to c minus a into c plus b. So here we're going to use the rule x minus y into x plus y is x square minus y square. So x raised to a minus b into a plus b is a square minus b square into x raised to b square minus c square into x raised to c square minus a square. This one simplification gives you x raised to a square minus b square. Same base, different indices, and you're multiplying them, add up all of them, b square minus c square plus c square minus a square. This ultimately everything gets cancelled, c square, c square, b square, so it's ultimately x raised to 0, any number raised to 0 is 1. So ultimately among these, 1 is the answer. We can almost calculate it. It's a symmetrical expression is bound to be 1. Right. So, let's verify quickly whether this is what we have. And yes, the answer is 1. <clears throat> let's move further. So, here we have something like x is equal to 3 raised to 1 by 3 plus 3 raised to minus 1 by 3. What would be 3x cubed minus 9x? Now, you have been asked 3x cubed minus 9x. So apparently we need to calculate x cubed. This is similar to earlier sum where we took about p raised to 1 by 3 plus p raised to minus 1 by 3. So we need to cube. So we have x is equal to 3 raised to 1 by 3 plus 3 raised to minus 1 by 3. So hence in this case we have to cube both sides. So we have x cubed is equal to 3 raised to 1 by 3 plus 3 raised to minus 1 by 3 the whole cube. So here we are using the rule that a plus b the whole cube is a cube plus b cube that is 3 raised to 1 by 3 the whole cube plus 3ab that is 3 into 3 that is 3 raised to 1 by 3 Sorry, this should be minus 1 by 3 into b, that is 3 raised to minus 1 by 3. So we have done a plus b, the whole cube is a cube plus b cube plus 3ab into bracket 3a minus b, that is 3 raised to 1 by 3 minus 3 raised to minus 1 by 3. So let's quickly put up this formula over here. So it's going to be a plus b, the whole cube is a cube plus b cube plus 3ab into a plus b. So hence we have this particular formula over here. As we did a minus b the whole cube was a cube minus b cube minus 3ab into a minus b. 
Now let's simplify this using these rules. So we have 3 raised to 1 by 3 into 3 plus 3 raised to minus 1 by 3 into 3 plus 3 into 3 raised to 1 by 3 minus 1 by 3. We're using the first rule x raised to a into x raised to b is x raised to a minus b. And now this alone can be written again as we have, we can write this as x itself because it's 3 raised to 1 by 3 plus 3 raised to minus 1 by 3. Now this if you see is nothing but 3 raised to 1 plus 3 raised to minus 1 plus 3 into 3 raised to 0 into x. Right? And this of course is x cubed. So we have x cubed is equal to 3 plus 3 raised to minus 1 is 1 by 3 plus 3 into 1 into x. 3 raised to 0 is 1. So if you take, we don't need in none of these, we have this. So we have, we can multiply all the terms by 3. You can multiply this by 3. So we get 3x cubed. This you multiply by 3, you get 3 into 3, 9. 3 into 1 by 3 is 1 plus 3 into 3x that is 9x. So basically or you take the LCM on both sides and then cross multiply or multiply all the terms by 3 just to do away with the fraction. So 3x cubed plus 3 into 3, 9 plus 3 into 1 by 3 is 1 plus 3 into 3 into x, 9x. Now what we want is 3x cubed minus 9x. So we need to transpose this to this side. And you get 3x cubed minus 9x is 9 plus 1, 10. And so here we have our guy 3x cubed minus 9x is 10. So among these are clear. This is the answer. We need her to verify. We need to be confident. And yes, we do have that as the answer. So this was one more application of the a plus b the whole cube formula as we had applied a cube minus b cube formula earlier. Let's see what is in store for us next. Okay, now here we have a concept that a raised to x is equal to b, b raised to y is equal to c, c raised to y, z is equal to a, then x, y, z is what? So we have a raised to x is equal to b, b raised to y is equal to c, c raised to z is equal to a. You need to find out the value of x, y, z. You can possibly, one way of doing it is multiplying all these. Then you multiply all these things, you all three equations. That is equation 1, 2 and 3. So 1 into 2 into 3. So we have a raised to x into b raised to y into c raised to z is a, b, c. Now after this there are two ways of doing it. But a simpler way would be compare a raised to x with a, which is the same as a raised to x would be equal to a raised to 1, therefore x would be equal to 1. Similarly, b raised to y, compare it with b, so it's b raised to y is b raised to 1, so naturally y would be 1. Similarly, c raised to z is c, which is this, is this, which is the same as c raised to 1, therefore if the bases are equal, the indices are bound to be equal. So x is 1, y is 1, z is 1. So naturally x, y, z is 1 into 1 into 1, which is 1. Right? So that way we can get the answer for this expression x, y, z as 1. So among these, a is our answer. And yes, we do have that as the answer. Let's move over further. So what we have here, we have been quite familiar with this kind of a problem. We came across this in terms of L and M. But let's quickly recap. So this can be now written as X raised to A minus B, this one. The whole raised to A square plus AB plus B square. And the next one is X raised to B minus C. The whole raised to B square plus BC plus c squared and the last one is x raised to c minus a the whole raised to c squared plus c a plus a squared. Now if you use the power of power rule this ultimately becomes a minus b into a squared plus a b plus b squared. So you are going to use that x minus y 
into x square plus xy plus y square formula is x cube minus y cube. So this would become a cube minus b cube, b cube minus c cube. This would become c cube minus a cube. So if you add up all the indices, you end up getting x raised to 0. So you end up getting x raised to 0, which is going to be 1. So we're not harping too much on this because we have done a, exactly the same problem. But just a reminder for the formula, this is what we're going to use. So among these, our option is going to be 1. So without much ado, let's take it to the next level. Yes, so we have this kind of a sum. We have an interesting situation here. So which is a little different, we did one particular sum where we use the k method. So it's told that 2 raised to x is equal to 3 raised to y is equal to 6 raised to minus z. You have been asked to find the value of this particular expression. So all these three are equal, so we can equate them with k. You can equate all these with k, that means 2 raised to x is k, 3 raised to y is k and 6 raised to minus z is also k. Now if 2 raised to x is k, it means you take the x root on both sides. So you, it's like telling for one of them, we shall do it 2 raised to x, the whole raised to 1 by x would be equal to k raised to 1 by x. So this ultimately is going to be 2 is going to be k raised to 1 by x. So quite similar to this, 3 would be equal to k raised to 1 by y and 6 would be equal to what? Yes, you're right, it's k raised to minus 1 by z. Now, we know very well there is a relationship between 2, 3 and 6. We know that 2 into 3 is equal to 6. So, instead of 2, we can put k raised to 1 by x. Instead of 3, we can put k raised to 1 by y. And instead of 6, we can put k raised to minus 1 upon z. And then on the left hand side, we use the rule product of two powers, common base. It is the sum of the indices. 1 upon x plus 1 upon y is k raised to minus 1 by z. So we have <coughs> again two bases equal, hence the indices are bound to be equal. So 1 by x plus 1 by y would be equal to minus 1 by z which effectively would mean 1 by x plus 1 by y plus 1 by z would be 0. So, the value of this expression would be 0. So, this is how we do the concept of equating with k and this is where we change it. Whenever we have 2 raised to x is k, that means 2 would be equal to k raised to 1 by x. Here, 3 raised to y is k, so 3 is k raised to 1 by y. 6 raised to minus z is k, so 6 would be equal to k raised to minus 1 by z. And then we substitute in any relationship that <coughs> relates to 3 and 6. In some cases, you may have a division relationship, so we substitute in them accordingly. Right? <coughs> so now let's move further and see what is yes, our answer is 0.